Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Stuart Cohen. I'm the president of IGI Cyber Labs, which is where Nodeware um, is uh, is part of IGI Cyber Labs and part of our parent company, IGI. Um, before we get started, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, as a reminder, you know, this is designed to provide you a demonstration of the product. It's also to give you a chance to talk to uh, one of your peers. Uh, Brian Lenning is with us, um, who owns and runs an MSP himself. Um, we will uh, we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. But uh, before we do, you know, if you have any questions, you want to make sure we answer immediately to use your time the wisest. You know, if uh, if you got a couple of questions before we get into the demonstration, if you submit them into the chat or question box, uh, we will get to those right away. Um, and with that, uh, we've got you know a group of people that have already logged in. So um, let's just, we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll get started. We got a couple of slides to walk through. Uh, once again, as I said, you know we'll introduce you to Nodeware, uh, Frank Ramondi. Um, who's our vice president of channel uh, and of uh, strategic relationships is on uh, with us. We'll also talk, uh, we'll show you a live demo. We'll do a Q and A. Once again, you know, this is about you and being able to answer your questions. So let's make this collaborative. Let's put the questions in. Um, we will be recording this. So if you wanna, if you wanna check out the recording later, you'll be able to. If you want a link to a, a shorter version of the demo, we can get you videos of that. There's also videos available on our website as well. A couple of other things coming up, just so people are aware. Uh, if you're a seven-figure MSP member, uh, we have open office hours uh, coming up on Friday with the seven-figure group. Um, we have a special promotion with seven-figure um, for 2023. Um, and if you're looking to grow your business and enhance what you're doing with cybersecurity services as an MSP, I would suggest checking out Seven Figure MSP. You know, great program. They do a lot of things to help educate you from a sales and marketing standpoint, um, if that's something you're interested in. We also have a couple of our upcoming cybersecurity thought leadership uh, sessions, uh, one of which we have coming up is around security through visibility and awareness. Uh, it's coming up on April 6th. Um, we also have one with Q Radar. Q Radar, as uh, part of the IBM offering, is moving into small businesses. Uh, and on April 19th, we're going to have uh, somebody from IBM, as well as a couple of people from Carbon Helix, that are talking about how uh, Q Radar is helping small business leaders and uh, and how you can take advantage of that. And then there's another one that we don't have on here yet, but we'll have uh, late in April, uh, specifically around managed service providers and uh, and managed services uh, that are out there today to not only help support MSPs, but to help support um, small business leaders with all of the things that are coming their way. So take a look at that. Um, it'll be on our website. It'll also be, uh, it's on our LinkedIn profile, on our Facebook profile. So you have various ways to register for it, various ways to submit questions. Uh, and as always, if you don't attend the session, you can submit a question. Uh, we, uh, we guarantee to ask the questions, to get the answer in the recording, and then to give you an opportunity to go back and view it uh, at your own time. So uh, let me introduce Brian Lenning. Brian is the founder and CEO of Lenning & Associates. Uh, we're thrilled to have him with us today. Um, He's available to answer any specific questions you have uh, or to provide some you know, specific color commentary as another MSP as to you know, how he's using Nodeware, how he's looking at continuous vulnerability management, you know, how he portrays that to his clients, um, as well as any other topics, you know, kind of free game to both us and to him. Uh, before I turn this over to Frank, um, we did get a question. Um, that came in, um, and Frank, it's specifically a question about how do you guys do continuous vulnerability management? That I know you'll. Uh, um, it says how do you how do you do continuous vulnerability management versus the others that are uh, uh, point and click or uh, scheduled? So I'm sure you can show that in the demo. Uh, but with that, uh, yep, before yep, we get started, I'll give everybody you know just a couple of seconds if you have a quick question. Uh, put it in the question box, put it in the chat box, because we want to use your time as wisely as possible. 
Great. All right. So um, let me start sharing in one second. Just want to go to here. Okay. So um, let me go back to here. So um, thanks, Stuart, and, and thank you, Brian, for for joining us today. Appreciate we definitely appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we do with Nodeware is in, in to the point of the question with, of continuous and what we mean. So to start, our, our focus is continuous normal business hours scanning without having to schedule, without having to think about where the data, um, how old the data is, how old a scan is. You know, I heard a new latest vulnerability that came out, you know, a day or two ago. You know, how do I check if that's on my system without having to, you know, think about it? So as a start, this product was developed um, to, to run continuously and to be low cost. So that was really kind of the design functions. It's been around five, six years as an individual product. And so we're very excited about what we've come to. Um, what you're seeing here is an MSP screen, uh, sort of the platform screen of as you would enter. And to get to this point with customers and the data that I'll get, I'll get into, um, you've deployed, uh, in a very short order, short amount of time, you've deployed uh, one of three things or, or combination. One is a network sensor that is covering um, sort of a one-to-many. It's a window sensor or virtual um, virtual machine sensor on VMware or vSphere. And that one-to-many is think of it again the broad phishing net. You're putting that on your on a device on the network, and it's going out and scanning and finding every single IP address, and that can be across subnets. Uh, it can be multiple locations coming into one uh, location. So that's capturing IP cameras on the edge, to printers, to firewalls, to servers and the desktops, um, iPhones and Androids as they connect onto the Wi-Fi network. All those are being scanned and identified, um, uh, you know, again, via this network sensor. Second option is with, uh, or second addition is with agents that we have for Windows devices, for Mac, uh, Macintosh and for some Linux endpoints. So those agents are deployed. You can deploy them silently via your RMM, or you can just uh, deploy them uh, how you, you know, however you might otherwise deploy a, an agent onto a, onto a system. And then we have a third, which is an external scan, which is a way to um, uh, to get all of your um, externals that you're managing, websites, etc. Uh, to have be looked into that as well. So that's how we collect it all. Um, there's no scheduling of the scans, right? It's just, it's happening uh, regularly. Uh, it is happening with um, uh, with regularity, literally with every minute, every device is being pinged to see if it's online or not. We check its fingerprints every three to four or five minutes. And then once a day, every single asset is rescanned against you know all the new uh, the existing and all the new, newly known, newly uh, communicated vulnerabilities into the massive database that we maintain, and we kind of match up and see what's there, and that again, it's producing what we're, what you're seeing here. So let's get into it real quickly. Just again, you can look at your customer dashboard. You can see uh, your four different customers. In this case, uh, you know what their what their score is. Um, you know, from you can see their critical vulnerabilities. We'll come back here later. It's sort of this this little gear is how to manage that customer. Uh, but let's go in and look at what we produce and what uh, you know Brian and his colleagues uh, are able to define and, and and determine and learn about their system. So in this case here, we're seeing the um, you know the the 19 assets have been monitored and scanned, and there's currently 17 online. Um, you can see the two critical vulnerabilities that we saw on the previous screen called out here. Um, you can see the green eyeball is telling you whether it's online. This is telling you what kind of agent or sensor is being is being run or is, has found this system. So you got from uncredentialed, non-credentialed scan to an agent base to the cloud, um, sort of the external scans that we talked about. And then you have, you know, the IP address and MAC address. We can give it a name. We're finding the fingerprint of that device, so you can quickly look and see whether it's a Windows 7 machine or it's an Ubuntu or a server. Um, we do these taggings as well, so you can, uh, some of these are organic, so if you wanted, you know, come up and you wanted to do some work on Ubuntu, you can click on one of them and you see all of them within that range, kind of, kind of a, a quick filter. Um, we also enable you to do, create specific ones. So let's say, you know, you, you, you sorted, you created a, 
an, F, an SF office. Um, in this case, again, you might want to be just looking at those systems and just just uh, filter down. You can create a report off of just these systems um, as well to give to a tech or to give to if you're doing a co-managed um, co-managed opportunity, then you could share this with your end user and and help them have them help work on some of that. And then we got our scoring again from zero to 999. Um, we have the full range here in this customer, this demo customer. Um, zero is ultimately the worst and 999 is, is actually the best that you can do. So in this case, that's what we've got. Um, a couple different things here. We can do some other filtering and MAC addresses, but let's go in and look at one of these systems here. Here's a Dell server that was deployed without any updates right so this is as raw machine as you can get and you're going to have all kinds of uh, 1700 almost 1800 uh, findings relative to vulnerabilities and, and risk levels so you can see you know critical high etc you can see all these different things the unique thing is is uh, that we provide that's really powerful and brian can maybe talk to this in a minute is the you know what we once we find the vulnerability which is one positive piece but the next piece is okay what are you going to do with that right so normally you would have to go and research find on on a um on google or go to microsoft site and try to find what's going on well here we give you the specific description right we give you here's the kb file that is missing from um from this device which is causing this thing which is very helpful there, so you can know to go that. But one more step we take you is to take you directly to the Microsoft uh, advisory page for that particular um, for that particular um, asset or for this particular vulnerability. So here you've got next level of data regarding this, regarding all of this, and um, uh, you know it's 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 all there for you to take. So in most cases, this is you know saving. 15, 20, maybe some more time than that uh, of a technician's time to find the remedy and, and go and do it. So we're kind of cutting to the chase here. You find a vulnerability, go take action on it. Uh, Brian, I'm, maybe if you've got any sort of, uh, you know, activity or, you know, have you used that tool or that, that remediation suggestions in your work so far? Uh, we have. We, we use that as it's kind of a roadmap. Uh, once we've um, once we've uh, signed an agreement with a client and bring them on board as part of our onboarding process and and part of the resolution to the problems that we have, because you know um, we're doing risk assessments before a, a client comes on board, and this is a critical tool to uh, evaluate those risks. Um, and to also uh, show that there's risks out there. Uh, we then use this uh, to build out our plan as to what work needs to be done, what vulnerabilities do we need to get addressed, um, and allows us to quickly go through and either um, uh, manually do them if it's a, a smaller group or uh, script those uh, to be updated uh, through our RMM tool. Good. Perfect. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, one, one of those one of those two steps I'm going to show on here as well. So let's say, again, this is, you know, uh, 200 assets, right? It would be multiple pages down. If you've heard of a new CVE that came down yesterday um, and you want to know if your environment's been infected by that or, or has that in its presence, um, you can actually go in here and do a search for the particular number of, I'm just, I think this is the one I'm just remembering there's this one but you know a quick filter to to see if you've got that in your environment so you can address that quickly um, another thing you can do kind of to, to your point Brian if you you know let's say you you wanted to uh, you know you, you really want to just focus on Ubuntu devices um, you could select all of those right and now you can go and you can create you know you can apply a tag to them that you've created on your own or you can create a report um that you've uh, you know you want to generate and just you know send that to a technician or maybe to the customer um, you can pause the scanning of those assets so kind of a temporary pause so that you can do some work then once you've done the work you can actually go here and do a rescan so you know maybe this these devices were scanned you know a couple hours ago um, rather than wait the 24 hours to the next 
uh, scan, you can actually request a new scan here and it'll prioritize those to the next block of, of scannings that we do. So, um, you know, again, a very sort of functional tool to uh, to check your work or to just, uh, you know, do some, you know, manage what your, your environment is. So, so that's that's sort of our the environment of of scanning and how we uh, you know we get to the data that's useful. Let me show a little bit on the reports that we produce. I know that was a question ahead of time. So, from a reporting standpoint, we have two things that we do. We have a, a scheduled scan or scheduled reporting. So you can go in and edit your schedule. Let's say you want you know maybe it's uh, you know monthly instead of weekly. You want it. Uh, you know, you want it on the third of the month, you want these two reports and you want it for all your customers. So if you were to click and save that um, and you, you, you've got that, now you've got your schedule and those would come into this platform uh, right into here. For a number of security reasons and, and, and risks of email, we don't email them out to you, um, but you can get a notice if the, when the new reports are available um, or you can just always come in here whenever you need them. So. Again, this kind of might be handy from an archiving for, for compliance or for um, HIPAA or for any other auditing issues down the line, uh, you would have all these reports. So you could have, let me go into the types of reports. So if we look down here, we can see there's nine different reports uh, that you can get. Again, these are on demand or uh, within, uh, within a schedule. So you get a full network report, which kind of shows all the details down that I went through per device. Uh, if you want to just look at your external uh, devices, if you want to get a two-page executive summary that you can take to your customer, um, you can take that and, you know, it gives you your top 10 and your most common vulnerabilities and kind of your profile, how many high risks and uh, medium risks you have. Um, you can get your top vulnerabilities report just on that, Log4j, inventory, there's an exceptions report. So if you're making some changes or maybe you're, uh, maybe you're co-managed or one of your techs is making some changes, we'll track the changes relative to the vulnerability, whether you paused it or whether there was some work done on it. Um, so that is a that is provided in, a, in a, an exceptions report, which again might be a good archiving one just to get when you need it. And then uh, there's a JSON report and an XML. So all of those are are available and handy for um, again for on demand or for um, for regularly scheduled. One other key element within our reporting is how we can report is via API. So we have a full JSON REST API uh, schedule, and this is for a particular customer. But if we go to the api.nodeware.com, um, you can see uh, all the different elements. So we got from an alerting standpoint, all the assets, you know, credentials. Um, the, and most of these are one way out to you to to implement into your platform or any other resources. Um, there's also some um, uh, APIs back to the platform. And, and Mark, if you're available, maybe you can just clarify again because I always um, miss that. Is what um, API you know all the data out to somewhere is available? What other APIs can we do into the platform? Uh, you can request rescan, set up external scans, um, delete customers, add customers. So it is a push-pull uh, API model. Um, the UI Frank's been showing is built 100% off of our API. So it's just our interpretation uh, in the UI. So we have many customers that use it to create their own dashboards. And uh, again, we leverage it as well. So it is a Anything you can do basically other than buy, purchase within the UI can be done via the API. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, so last last I wanted to just show a little bit is our support page and this is sort of our knowledge base of all the tools that you would need, um, right? The, de the deployment is usually the first, is always <laughs> the first uh, element of, of, uh, of getting this up and running and we have a lot of different, um, you know, tools and tricks and this is how we you know we are enabling you know setup really with the customer setup can be in, in as short as you know 10 minutes um, and deployment onto a customer site and up and running where you're collecting data can be as quick as um, you know another 15 to 20 minutes or less so it's it's uh, really straightforward it's a bunch of you know a number of clicks and and uh, and move on so this is really quite uh, quite productive and, and helpful 
um, and one of our key advantages of, of data. And, and Brian, maybe I'll bring it back to you in terms of how you've deployed or maybe explain what you've deployed and you know how that's gone for you. Uh, sure. Um, so typically, depending upon the environment, you know, we're going to choose how we're going to deploy, um, whether it be sensor based or agent based, um, you know, what credentials we have or don't have. So, you know, if we have a client that, um, let's say, is a smaller client that doesn't have uh, Active Directory or a server or something to be able to uh, have centralized credentials, then we'll deploy agents out on all the workstations to be able to do our scans along with uh, a sensor out there as well to kind of capture any of the um, other devices that would be popping on and off of the network. Um, otherwise, uh, we very effectively have, have deployed it, provided the correct creden credentials are provided, administrative credentials. Well, we create a secondary uh, administrative credentials that we use to run against um, the particular environment uh, when we're deploying a sensor out there. And it's been very, uh, very, good for us um, and and like Frank was saying, uh, very quick to deploy. I mean, it's straightforward, easy to do. Um, and, you know, we've seen results coming back very quickly, much, much quicker than some of the other products that we've uh, worked with in the past. So, um, you know, typically deployed via our RMM tool that, you know, we're pushing that out uh, very easily. Uh, yeah, a script to be able to put it out there. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So let me see. I think, um, let me see if there's anything else I want to call out here. Um, I think that's kind of the main question. Stuart, any, so just ask, did I answer the questions that came up? And if there's been any others that have come up that I can uh, chat, look in here? Well, one, um, so, one came up specifically. Um, so we we use our API. Um, I would say, you know, we have a, a thorough and complete API that we have people like uh, Security Studio, as an example, uses it for their assessment tools. Um, they have a series of S2 assessments that integrate the Nodeware output into their assessment tool to create a holistic risk management and a continuous risk management profile for an account. Um, we have that we have a lot of MSPs using the APIs in a wide variety of ways to either feed their dashboard, feed their network, you know, feed their assessment tools or their reports, um, as long as as well as a number of managed service yeah. providers that use the output of continuous vulnerability management yeah. and an always on capability to help assist the MSPs. So, you know, my other suggestion would be, you know, as you look at um, selling cybersecurity services, think about the output of Nodeware from a continuous vulnerability management standpoint, from an immediate alerting, and some of the things the API can do to assist you to assist your clients. Um, so that would be kind of the one perspective that, you know, I would bring into this. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that. Yeah, I would say it's it gives us some insight that we uh we've kind of had in the past but in a deeper level uh as to when new devices pop onto a network uh we're able to rapidly see them come on and assess the vulnerability what's there um and uh that's helped us to be a little more proactive at watching what's coming on and off the networks you know from a long-term perspective and we can kind of see trends you know how many devices are appearing on a regular basis? Do we have transient devices that are, are only there for a specific period of time? Um, and try to figure out, you know, is this a device that is a client device that's just being brought in? Um, so sort of a, you know, bring your own device type of mm -hmm. situation. And <laughs> if so, we need to assess the vulnerabilities. Yeah, we need to, we, yeah. yeah, we need to kind of be aware of those devices coming into the network if they don't have appropriate security measures in place 
on those yep. either vulnerabilities or our tool set. So uh, we can click quickly see them and then if necessary, isolate them uh, from the network if they're not up to our standards. Yeah, no, perfect. Well, and that, that brings up a good point. I didn't, I didn't uh, cover it specifically is the alerting you mentioned so we have three kind of alerts uh that are found so one is when an you know again when the daily scan is done uh if a new critical vulnerability is is discovered then we will uh, alert that um we if a new asset's found again kind of your point brian when when a new uh, maybe it's a printer maybe it's a home pc or whatever it might be is brought onto the network we can send an alert regarding that and then lastly uh, again, you don't want a sensor going offline and you know <laughs> ruining your whole protection scheme. So if it does, if a sensor does go offline, then then those alert that alert can be sent as well. Um, we have two available connectors today. Uh, one is email. So an email can be I think three or four different email addresses can be put in. One of those might be your lead tech. Might have been, one might be your PSA uh, sort of receiving tool for alerts. Um, that'll capture the customer name or we'll send along the customer name the date uh the ip address and uh, a couple other key details that you can go back in to the platform and figure out uh you know what it is but at least you've created that ticket um you can also put it into a slack channel uh so that um you know your internal team or whoever's on that slack um can um, can work it and, and and deal with it so um good good uh, call out there and uh, brian thank you um so, so i think Brian, we got we got a couple of questions. Um, one of which, um, you know, people talk about moving from monthly or quarterly scans to continuous vulnerability management, um, but they also talk about you know continuous vulnerability management as a piece of the solution. You know, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on kind of how you how you educate, how you sell how you upgrade you know a client that might be an it only client to whether it's kind of base middle uh extensive cyber solutions from yourself so um our client base is is moving towards you know a continuous uh security model where we're always running scans we're always watching what's going on so um you know we're moving away from the kind of hop in and and look at a problem and try to assess it um so having a continuous vulnerability scan tool is just another one of those pieces of the puzzle that helps us to protect a network uh, uh long term uh you know short term obviously in a, in a security assessment it's a great tool to be able to see what the snapshot is of the environment and we use that as the jump off point and then long term we use that as a one of our uh, components to show that okay we've uh, we not only do we do the assessment initially but then we're using it as a tool to say okay now we've solved these problems and then we're monitoring them for future uh future problems uh future uh, vulnerabilities that appear so it's and it's not a while they they appear in reviews with clients uh for us and for our clients it's more of a peace of mind to say hey it's it's we're always checking this stuff versus just hopping in you know once a quarter and running a scan it, it's more about a we're always doing this this is always running and any new vulnerabilities that appear are automatically going to be uh, uh sent to us uh to be addressed um and taken care of in, in a uh, rapid fashion provided there's a fix available for it um so that, that's, well, that's that's it i, I that's think a it's key. critical piece yeah you know it, 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 we hear this all the time right from from msps and and their customers oh you know you weren't you know you guys were quiet this month i didn't hear anything from you well now you can say yeah well we've been doing all this stuff and because of all this it's quiet right you're we're minimizing your risk we're minimizing your problems uh you know proactively rather than reactively when it was when you would normally see us so um it's got to be a great well, message and, and we, customers. yeah and we will snapshot the 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 security scores to say hey you know we're this is where we're going so we'll put those in the in the reports and say okay 
you know, while we are doing continuous scanning, you know, we're going to give you a snapshot and say, you know, th this week or this month, you know, we were good. And then, you know, we here's another snapshot. But, you know, uh, it's key to let them know that this isn't just a we ran it this day. It's a we run this all the time. It's always there. It's always doing its job. So because we all know that, you know, um, that we have to catch these things quickly. Um, that's the only way to do it. So, yeah. well, you know, again, it just just you know, as I kind of alluded to, right? These these vulnerabilities are coming down every day, and I don't know what the latest number is, but I'm sure it's in the dozens and dozens per day that are published and made available. And you know, the hackers, the bad guys, know when those are going, and they they probably already know a lot of environments, and they hear about a new vulnerability and then let's go try and attack that one right and so if you're if you're not sort of paying attention to those on a daily basis or at least know that your system is doing it on a daily basis you are uh, you know you're, you're doing your customer a disservice by not uh, really clearly and quickly monitoring that so um you know and, hackers, and i would just the hackers know everything every every day so if you're not monitoring it they're they're, they're a step ahead and, and and um i just want to make a point here too is is um uh, we use various tools for various things and this is not a catch-all tool no, no tool is and nor would i ever uh purport to want a tool that is a catch-all because I, I think if uh somebody puts too many eggs in one basket i think you're you're going to miss out on something so uh, I find that this is a tool that's very focused on what it does and does it well versus trying to be everything to everybody. And I think those tools to try to be everything to everybody miss out on the ability to be able to focus and concentrate on things that are most important for what the tool does versus trying to appease everybody. So um, I, I would, uh, I'm just cautious of those tools that try to put too many things together in one place. It also can be, overwhelming um not only for um for us or sorry for clients but also for us if there's too many things in one space and there's this uh noise of data that comes out of there so i think what i see in nodeware is it's a very defined uh a set of information that comes back reports and scores uh, i find that the the scoring capability is uh, very valuable not only in the review process but even more so in the risk assessment when we're going into a client and pitching a client to say here here's your risk here's your score um the one thing I, I would say is is that we use the overall score but then we also drill down and look at individuals and, and the reason i say that is because you can look like you have a great score when 30 or 40 workstations are all uh, three nines, right? But all it takes is one device, you know, a critical device like a, a server or a firewall or something to have a lower score to be a real problem, you know, within a network. And it may only affect the score somewhat, but uh, in reality, it's a much bigger threat than what the score actually uh, shows. So that's... Yeah that's the way we utilize it so it's not just about the big scores but it's about all those devices and looking at them individually so yeah and that's why i like the individual score as well in addition to the overall score that's so, pretty brian could you just elaborate a little bit more on how you use the individual score uh separate from the overall score because i think that'd be valuable for people to understand but the individual score is utilized to show that a particular asset has some significant needs. It could be uh, outdated operating system, uh, unpatched, you know, there's a, there's a variety of different things. And it's usually pitched as I, if it's unpatched, 
then it's like, okay, these are critical things we need to patch right away. And this is part of our, you know, onboarding and, and in our first 30 to 60 days, we're gonna address all these things. It could also be something where it's uh, outdated operating systems so when we need to upgrade an operating system, or maybe it's a rip and replace because not only is the operating system so old, but the machine is so old that yeah, it needs to also be replaced. You know, these are these are talking points. These are things that that need to be addressed. And this is, I would say, almost empirical data to say, hey, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer this is something that needs to be addressed immediately and here's the reason why you know we can visually give them the data to say hey this is why this needs to be looked at immediately you know if if something comes up in a, in in a red category we're going to say you know this is priority number 1 we need to address and maybe all the yellows will address those within the 30 60 days but the reds we're going to try to address in the first week or two you know if if it's possible it, obviously a server replacement may not be you know within a week or two but we need to find a temporary solution to to uh elevate the level of security on that device and then plan for the replacement at some point in time so frank we got a question specifically about capturing alerts and uh you know can what sources can you capture alerts from uh and they're particularly interested in Office 365. So yeah, so so Mark might be able to step in a little bit on this um, verbally as well. But we don't we don't really track an application alert. Um, Office 365 is managed really by Microsoft, and they've got their their elements on there. We can we we'll, we will track an alert based on the individual assets that we're monitoring. So. If it's an agent-based Windows notebook running Windows 365, we can see all of the vulnerabilities on that machine specifically, but not back to the Microsoft Office server. Mark, do you want to clarify yeah. a little bit there? I probably butchered that a little yeah, bit. So, so Nodeware is basically, think of it like this for simplicity terms. Nodeware scans the hardware, right? That's primarily what we look at. But there are also CVEs in accordance to software that may be running on it, like Google Chrome or something like, you know, Adobe Acrobat. We will look at certain software packages that have published CVEs and report back on them. But we don't look at or scan Office 365. No one needs to scan it. That is owned, managed, and maintained by Microsoft. There is no real reason to scan an O365 environment. However, if you have uh, an Azure cloud environment, obviously that is managed, not necessarily owned by you, but managed by you, you would deploy an agent or a sensor within that environment and we would scan the hardware. And if it is a credentialed scan, meaning mainly agents or credentialed sensor scans, we do look at software. So <clears throat> the default with a sensor is it's uncredentialed. It, it, it won't have access to the registry service processes in the file system. So there's no way for us to probe for software package CVEs. So therefore we default to just looking at hardware CVE data. However, the agent being credentialed in nature because it's installed on the machine does have access to registry file system service and processes that will look at outdated software, missing patches, uh, so on and so forth. You know, I think that I think that speaks well to Brian's point that he made earlier. You know, we are really focused on staying in our own lane, right? We're focused on providing continuous vulnerability management. And, uh, and providing immediate alerts and providing the deep scan capabilities to help remediate um, those vulnerabilities as you see them. You know, there's a lot of tools out there that do a lot of different things. Um, our goal is not to do, you know, a lot of things from a mediocre standpoint and compete with a lot of people that are best in breed in different areas. Our goal is to really provide the very best continuous vulnerability management that you can set up, you can use, you can get started, you can deploy, you know, you can use our API to leverage the output quickly. Um, and we wanna do that, you know, at a very fair and attractive price. So I think getting back to Brian's point, we're really focused on 
uh, stay in our lane, do what we do best, and uh, and give the MSPs the flexibility to do what they want to do with the other products. Yeah. So yeah, that, I would add that the, I would add that there are there are great tools out there for you know managing Office 365 as far as you know security access and and vulnerability and stuff on that side. It, it this is this is not the the tool that does that. This is the tool that looks on the local side of, of things and finds out what's going on in your network. So as Stuart said, you know, being in the lane, you know, be the best that you can be in the lane. There's other people that are in that Office 365 lane that do an exceptional job at that. And using one of those tools would be uh, ideal for that type of situation. But, you know, what Nodeware does is something different. And um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. So Frank, we, we did get one question and it's probably worth maybe going back either to talk about or to show on the deep scan capability, the type of vulnerabilities that get identified uh, coming out of the deep scan capability. Either you can talk to it or you can show the demo, but um, it was a question that came up specifically about it. And um, while he while he's bringing it up, if he's going to show on the demo side, you know, I will say we've got some uh, we have some MSP partners that they used to have to research every single vulnerability that came up and they would spend, you know, 15 minutes to a half hour on each vulnerability, you know, per day that they had to research. Um, they're now doing that significantly faster with the deep scan capability that they're getting from Nodeware. Um, and we have MSPs that have showed, you know, a significant savings, 25 to 35% of the uh, systems analyst or cyber analyst time, um, which, you know, for a fully burdened person, you know, uh, salary plus bonus plus benefits, you know, that's a significant annual savings. And in some cases, it's the avoidance of hiring an additional person with that 25% performance improvement or productivity improvement, I should say. So. Um, I'll just let uh, Frank uh, show that for a second. Yeah, so just just repeat the the question what they're specifically looking for. Well, they just wanted to see what comes out of the deep scan uh, oh, capabilities okay. that they can leverage. Okay, so I'll just I, I'd use the server before I'll go into a desktop system um, in this case. So let me actually uh, actually go back to there's a different one that I wanted to show that was uh, sorry. Um, well, I can go to this one here. This is this desktop. Sorry, yeah, that was uh, the, this one's got an agent on it, so it'll be more deeply scanned. So, in this case, right, this is a desktop system. Um, you can look at specific vulnerabilities. So, you know, you can see which ones are high. No, no critical ones on here, but high and some medium ones. So, when you click down into it further, right, at this point, we're going to see the specific. Right. This is this is the description, you know, that would may or may not be available without the deep scan. But finding this this particular path of where the vulnerability is popping is is a direct result from our deep scan that Mark was just talking about as well. So you can, um, you know, go go directly into this and find and and fix this DLL version. Right. So that's that was a. That's a specific example on that vulnerability. Uh, let me see if there's another one in here that, uh, which one, yeah, any one of these, I guess. Um, so this could be one here that is, uh, you know, it's a different path, right? So it's a version, again, the DLL that's causing. So there's a little bit longer description here of what's going on um, and, you know, explaining what what was found there. So. Um, Mark, anything else you want to add on 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 these? No, I mean, so really, the the proper what I recommend for folks is deploy agents wherever you can on your Windows, Mac, and Linux machines, provided you have access to them via your RMM tool or even manually walking around to them, depending on how you want to do it. Install agents where possible. They're going to give you that deep scan data. Install a sensor where it's going to pick up all your networking gear, IoT, printers, all the stuff that you can't physically install an application on, let the sensor handle those. However, it is completely fine to go all agents 
or sensors, but the recommended is it's a combination of both for a complete coverage of your organization. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. Hopefully that answered the question. About segregating a VLAN. Um, yeah, so the, the segregation is pretty easy and that's really accomplished by the tagging. Uh, if you leverage the, whatever your tagging methodology may be, you want to tag devices by location, by type, by you know anything that you can come up with. Very quickly, when you're looking at your asset list, you can now say you, know, say you uh, name it by, let's just use location, New York City, San Francisco, Texas, Austin. You can tag those by, from your different facilities and you say you click on New York City, it will completely segment your network down to just those New York City um, devices. You can run reports on just those devices. You can rescan, you can add credentials, you can do a number of things. Um, but very quickly, the tagging is the quickest way to segment your network. The other way would be um, your deployment methodology. So if you're saying you're all sensor deployments and you say using that same analogy of location, you while you could use a single sensor to scan those remote and you know New York City, San Francisco, and Texas locations, I would recommend setting each one of those up as its own customer and think of them as a silo. So New York City is separate from San Francisco, which is separate from Texas. Now you can report individually on each of those and they uh and you would manage them each as their own separate entity um so it really comes down to how you want it managed we give you the freedom to set it up multiple ways the way i like is that siloed approach it keeps new york city separate from san francisco so if i have folks in both locations i can just communicate the new york city appliances to the new york city team and let them handle it but you know it's it's up to you how you want to do it. So between tagging and sensor deployment and customer creation, think of customers as either customer name or a location. Um, we offer your three different ways to segment your networks. Terrific. Well, um, we don't have any more questions. Um, let me just uh, put up a chart or two. These are some upcoming sessions that we have. Um, before we drop off, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to submit it. Uh, otherwise, we're going to give everybody a few minutes back. As I said, we run the open office hours with the seven-figure MSP group. Uh, plus, we have uh, uh, we have the folks talking about security through visibility and awareness. We're going to talk about Q Radar uh, and how it's helping small businesses and some of the things that IBM's doing to help small businesses uh, and how Nodeware is integrated into Q Radar. Um, so if you're a uh, if you're a QRadar user, uh, Nodeware through the API integrates into the QRadar dashboard. Um, for those MSPs that are using QRadar today, you can use uh, Nodeware in, in place of what was a discontinued vulnerability management solution from the QRadar team. Uh, and we're also going to talk about managed services and how managed services and uh, and SOCs are helping to support MSPs. Uh, with all of the uh, ongoing attacks that are coming from or coming at small businesses, as well as compliance and regulatory issues, and some of the things, once again, our API is doing to help those stock providers help the MSPs to support their clients. So, um, with that, you know, Brian, before we drop off, you know, any kind of closing thoughts or closing comments you have, or any advice you could give anybody who, uh, who's listening in? um to your point that you made Stuart, time is money and you know a tool like uh nodeware can certainly save a lot of time and that could be repurposed for other things project work you know you talked about reduction in staff i look at it as an opportunity to grow because now i have more capacity to to add more clients on while uh, you know myself and my staff have uh, less work to have to do. So, um, you know, anything that can help us to save money uh, and save time is certainly a, a tool we're going to continue to use uh, to our benefit, but most importantly, to the benefit of our clients, because 
you know, time is money to them as well. So, yeah. And Stuart, the other thing I would I would add, just again, kind of uh, take off on the screen share now, is that um, you know, if you're interested, we can you know we can do a pr proof of concept uh, for you for a couple of weeks, and you can try it on your own business. You can try it on a customer or two with a free trial. Uh, when you do a trial with a customer, it's a seven day. You can deploy, get all the data, uh, and really kind of understand. You know, prepare a proper quote or a proper SOW for the work that you might need. As Brian was mentioning, you find some things that are way out of date, and you just don't even want to have to deal with before you start managing. So um, anyway, there's some some good some good um, tools there for you to to give us a try and uh, and go there. The other last thing I'll just mention is uh, locations for purchase, right? We have distribution set up at TD Cinex at the, through the Ingram Cloud Marketplace and through a, a value-add distributor called Rain Networks. Um, we're also just up on the AWS Marketplace. So if you're selling your own services through AWS Marketplace, you can and configure uh, Nodeware directly from within there as well through private offers. So. Um, we'd love to give you a try and get you started. And as Brian is is done, is sort of learn more. Oh wow, I, this, you know, these added features provide a lot more stickiness to your clients, a lot more value add that um, you knew you were always doing, but now they can you can show them that you know you're being proactive and protective of their environments. The question that didn't get asked, just to elaborate on that, is, you know, Nodeware can be bought through an annual subscription through any of those partners. Um, or, you know, direct from us at a little bit higher cost if you want to use your credit card, but it can be done on an annual subscription paid up front, paid monthly, or we have a consumption model as well through all of our distribution partners um, as through ourselves, um, where you kind of pay as you go. There's no contract in place, and it gives you ultimate flexibility as your clients might be uh, moving around the number of devices they have. So uh, the net of it is, is uh, you know, we're interested in working with you. We'll work with you the way you want to work and uh, and we'll accommodate you the way you want to uh, deploy and transition from what you're doing, you know, monthly or Sunday nights or quarterly from an assessment or a vulnerability management standpoint uh, to get to continuous vulnerability management. So um, with that, you know, Brian, if you just have any uh, closing remarks, I'll give it to you. Otherwise, we'll... Uh, We'll let Frank then give some remarks and we'll say goodbye. I'm gonna leave it to Frank. <laughs> uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll, thank you, Brian. And I'll, I'll just uh, say thanks to Brian and to you, Stuart and Mark uh, Klein, our support expert uh, who's been chiming in on some answers. Um, but no, we just, we'd love to, you know, um, give it a try. We'll be at a number of events coming up. We'll be at Robin Robbins Bootcamp. Uh, we'll be at Kaseya IT Connect. We'll be, uh, a couple ASCII and Channel Pro events coming up uh, soon as well around the country. So uh, if you don't contact us electronically, come up and see us at an event. We'd love to talk to you and you know do a little pri more private demo if that uh, is appropriate. Or however we can help you uh, help your customers, we're here for you. Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, Mark, Frank, Brian. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for everybody who logged in. Um, you know, connect with us on LinkedIn, connect with us on Facebook, or uh, you've got the email addresses to get started. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions for Brian, you know, let us know and we'll pass those on to him as well. So thank you everybody for your time and uh, we'll give everybody a few minutes back on your day. Uh, have a great morning, have a great afternoon. Take care. Thank you all.